Extracting aluminum from its natural state is a complex and energy-intensive process. That's because aluminum is often found combined with other elements, such as oxygen, silicon, and fluoride. To extract pure aluminum, these compounds must be broken down through a chemical process known as smelting. Smelting requires a huge amount of electricity, which is why aluminum was once known as black gold. Today, aluminum is still considered a valuable commodity, and it's used in a wide range of products, from cars and airplanes to soda cans and kitchen foil. But let's focus on those soda cans. This is a rolling mill where sheets of aluminum are flattened into thin strips. These strips will eventually be formed into the shape of a soda can. But first, the aluminum has to be heated to a high temperature and passed through a series of rollers. This process, known as cold rolling, strengthens the aluminum and gives it the desired shape and thickness. The strips of aluminum are carefully monitored throughout the rolling process to ensure they are the right thickness and shape. Any strips that don't meet the specifications are rejected and recycled. Once the strips have been rolled, they are ready to be formed into cans. Now, let's take a look at how these strips of aluminum are turned into cans. First, the strips are fed into a machine called a blanking press. This machine uses a sharp die to punch out circular discs from the aluminum strip, which will become the sides of the cans. The discs are then fed into another machine called a drawing press. This machine uses a combination of pressure and heat to stretch and form the discs into the shape of a can. The drawing press has several stages, each of which uses a different set of dies to shape the can into its final form. As the cans are being made, they are carefully inspected for any defects. The cans are checked for things like dents, scratches, and uneven surfaces. Any cans that don't meet the required quality standards are removed from the production line. These cans are typically recycled, as they are not suitable for use as a final product. The inspection process is an important step in the can making process, as it ensures that only high quality cans are shipped to stores. This helps to maintain the reputation of the manufacturer and ensures that the cans are safe and effective for their intended use. Inspections are typically performed by a combination of machines and human workers. The machines are able to detect defects that may be difficult for the human eye to see, while the human workers are able to catch any defects that the machines may miss. This combination of technology and human oversight helps to ensure that only the highest quality cans are produced. As the cans are formed, they are automatically transported to the next stage of the process where they are inspected for any defects. Any cans that don't meet the quality standards are removed from the production line. The good cans are then sent to a machine called a seamer, which seals the top and bottom of the can together, creating the final shape. This entire process happens at a very high speed, with the machines producing thousands of cans per minute. Finally, the cans are cleaned and coated with the protective layer to prevent them from corroding. First, the cans are washed to remove any dust or debris that may have accumulated during the manufacturing process. Next, the cans are coated with a thin layer of paint or polymer, which acts as a barrier against oxygen and other corrosive agents. This coating helps to protect the aluminum and keep the soda inside fresh. After the cans are coated, they are inspected once again to ensure they meet the required standards. Any cans that don't pass the inspection are recycled. Once the cans are deemed to be of high enough quality, they are ready to be filled with soda and shipped to stores. But what happens to the cans once they've been emptied? This is a recycling plant where aluminum cans are collected, sorted, and processed for reuse. First, the cans are crushed into small pieces, known as cubics. Cubics are small pieces of aluminum that are created when aluminum cans are crushed. These small pieces are easier to transport and take up less space in a landfill than whole cans. The process of crushing aluminum cans into cubics is usually done using a machine called a can crusher. You guessed it! This machine uses a combination of pressure and a sharp blade to cut and crush the cans into small pieces. Once the cans are crushed into cubics, they are sorted according to their type of composition. 
Different materials such as steel and aluminum are separated using a variety of methods, including magnets and air jets. Don't jump in there. The aluminum cubics are then ready to be melted down and recycled into new products. Next, the cubics are fed into a furnace where they are melted down at a high temperature. This removes any impurities, such as paint or plastic, and produces a liquid aluminum alloy. The liquid aluminum is then poured into molds, where it cools and solidifies into ingots. These ingots can then be used to make new aluminum products such as cans, foil, and cars. But the recycling process doesn't end there. The recycling plant also uses a process called electrolysis to further purify the aluminum ingots. In electrolysis, the ingots are placed in a special bath containing a solution of molten salts. An electric current is then passed through the bath, which separates the aluminum from the other elements in the ingot. This purified aluminum can be used to make high quality products such as aircraft parts and high voltage power lines. But why go through all this trouble to recycle aluminum? Recycling aluminum saves a lot of energy. It takes about 95% less energy to make a can from recycled aluminum than it does to make a new one from raw materials. This means that recycling just one aluminum can can save enough energy to power a TV for three hours, 